Coach, thanks for joining us here. I appreciate pleasure. it. Uh, I'm sure one of the things everybody's wondering about right off the top, your quarterback situation, Carson Palmer coming off the knee injury. Drew Stanton also had his knee injury problems. Where are those guys in terms of coming back? Uh, they're doing great. Uh, Carson's probably three weeks ahead of schedule, maybe a month, and uh, keeps telling me he's going to be ready for minicamp. <laughs> we'll wait and see about that and uh, see if Dr. Waz lets him run, you know, and go. But, and Drew's doing extremely well. You know, his was not quite as serious, and, uh, but they're, they're both ahead of schedule. What do you do in terms of, uh, you had mentioned previously that Carson w wants to come back, but we'll see kind of what happens. Do you just give more reps to the quarterbacks that are healthy at the time whenever you are in, in off season? Do you bring in extra bodies uh, possibly to do well, that Well, no, this will be a big spring for Logan, you know, because of the two guys. We'll see how much Drew can do, but uh, I want to give Logan a ton of work anyway. Now, if Carson's cleared and ready to go, we'll, we'll put him out there. Where do you kind of see where your pass rush is, especially going into the draft? Is that something that you feel like, hey, we've got to do a lot with, or, or how do you kind of view that? So much of it will depend on free agency, you know, what we can accomplish in free agency. And Steve will do a great job of getting our guys that are, that are capable of playing for us at the right price, you know. And, uh, but we want to add speed to all our linebacker positions. When you look at the wide receiver position, obviously the big news, Larry Fitzgerald signing, so you know he's going to be back. You have a, a pretty good core that's intact from last year. Do you like how it is? Where, where do you see the development of maybe some of the younger guys, the, the two Brown guy, uh, boys? I mean, where do you kind of see where your wide receivers are? Yeah, I, uh, Jerron, hopefully we will be able to get him out there after he, you know, he broke his scapula in, in the last ball game. And we'll, and we'll see where but he made great progress as a receiver. He's been a great special teams player for us all year. but. He, he made an extremely good progress. He just had the one bad play everybody wants to remember. You know, we dropped in Seattle. But, I mean, he caught some great balls for us. He won the Kansas City game, you know, and, and put us in the playoffs. And, and Johnny uh, Smoke, he's, he's getting better every day. You know, I think he hit that rookie wall right around Christmas. And, uh, but he now knows what to anticipate. And uh, I, I think once you take some of the anxiety out of guys, especially as rookies, uh, you'll see great progress from those guys. Speaking of young players, you have a couple at tight end. Troy Nicholas, Darren Fells kind of came on at the end of the year. You still have veteran John Carlson, but how do you see the tight end position developing? Well, yeah, Troy's still a rookie. You know, he missed almost the entire season. He missed all of OTAs. He had a broken hand, then the ankle, then the surgery. And, uh, but we think what we've seen of him, he's everything we've drafted. I mean, he's everything we hope. He's young. He's, he's still very, very new to the position. And uh, so it'll be a big spring for him and a big training camp. But we think we have a jewel there. And Darren came on great for us at the end. Caught the ball well, blocked better, you know. Uh, everything's new for him because he doesn't have anything to fall back on. You know, he didn't play football. So uh, his learning curve is a little bit steeper, but he's, he's getting there. You had a lot of reasons for why Dayon Buchanan played a lot of that dollar linebacker all season long. Going forward, especially with the change in coordinators, does, does he go back to safety? Is there a possibility he does a lot more of what he was doing last year? Is that going to change? That, that will depend on what linebackers we have. And uh, he will play safety all spring. You know, he, he basically missed a year at safety because he played so much linebacker. And, and we want to get him trained, get his eyes in the right positions to play safety for us. And then if needed, and we'll have a package for him to get up there and cover the tight ends and the backs anyway uh, because he was so good at it. Uh, but we, we like to keep them at safety. When, when you go into the draft, what kind of input do you and your coaches have in terms of not only the run-up but also on draft day? How do you guys kind of fit into that? Oh, it's great teamwork. Yeah, everybody's on the same page. Coaches, scouts, uh, Steve makes the call, but we're all involved. And, and, and it's, I think that's why we've been so successful um, in, in our picks is that it, it's, a, it's a cardinal decision. You know, and uh, and everybody has a say. Um, when you're looking at, at cornerbacks, I, Antonio Cromartie is a free agent. You, you guys might have to look around to see what happens there. But what do you look for in an ideal cornerback? Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> there are not many around, though. <laughs> Crow, you know, the, those are long, leaner guys who can run. Right. You know, because the length, uh, when your catching circle is real big, you know, your pass defense circle is real big, so the quarterback has to be extremely accurate around those guys, and you know that that helps. But uh, you know, I don't think anybody played any better than Gerard Powers last year. He was probably our best guy for for 16, 17 games, and uh, you know, so it, smarts has a lot to do with it. 
You, uh, you were very proud of Todd Bowles for getting the Jets head coaching job. That was something you said when you walked in the door that for both he and Harold Goodwin, that's what you wanted to see them do is, is get head coaching jobs. When you look at Harold right now, is there, do you, do you give him any extra duties? You, you've made it very clear you're going to call the plays, but do you give him any extra responsibility going forward as he tries to move towards that possibility? I think this last preseason, I let him call a, couple, a game this year. I'm thinking I'll do at least two. Uh, so he can continue to develop as a coordinator. But uh, no, nothing. He's doing a great job of what he's doing. And, uh, you know, he has really good command of his room also. I think that's what set James apart from a lot of young coaches I've been around. He has really good command of, of, of the room when he's in front of it. And, and the last thing, uh, one of the fans want to congratulate you on your Coach of the Year award uh, once again, two times in three years. Uh, but he said, when you look in the mirror, what do you say to yourself? I have to get better at uh, to be a better head coach. Yeah, you got to be better work. You got to work every single day. You know, you can't ever relax in this business. And uh, I've always said it's a real short elevator ride back down. And uh, enjoy it was there, but don't let it. Don't even believe it. <laughs> well, we appreciate the time, Coach. Thank you very much for joining us here today in Indianapolis. For Bruce Arians, I'm Darren Urban. This has been a Combine Chat at EasyCardinals.com. <laughs>